Well, that's one happy chappy. I need seven to eight hours of sleep. That's a lie. Not true. So that's the, one of the biggest lies in all of sleep. And there's a couple of reasons why. So first of all, the math doesn't work. When we look at overall sleep cycles, average sleep cycle is 90 minutes. Average person has five of those. Five times 90 is 450 minutes or seven and a half hours. So right there, we know that doesn't work. But it's really interesting. If you sleep at the right time for your chronotype, it turns out you actually need less sleep. And if you sleep at a consistent level in terms of going to bed at the same time and waking up at the same time, you actually need less sleep. So I'm gonna tell you about my sleep for a second. So I'm a night owl or what I call a wolf. And so I go to bed at midnight and I wake up around 6.15 or so every day without an alarm. That's six and a half, that's six, six hours and 15 minutes. Exactly, so that doesn't fit into this seven to nine. Michael, how is that working? Number one, I sleep at the right time for my body, which is what a chronotype is. We're gonna talk a lot about those, but there's early birds in the middle, night owls, and then people who have trouble sleeping. There's different categories for these people. Once they know when to sleep, that actual sleep schedule begins to shrink a little bit because their body knows what to do and when to do it. Um, nope. Welcome back to my channel where whatever pops into my head pops onto your screen and you will love it. So I came across this amazing talk by this Dr. Lisa Exomans, but it's not in English. So I'm gonna translate it for y'all. Now she's trying to tell us why we go to bed late. Why do you go to bed late? Do you know the answer to that? Okay, we're about to figure this out with this lady. She has some amazing points and I'm gonna add a little bit of my own sauce to the thing because my own sauce be juicy. Now, she's talking about every single night around 11 o'clock at night, she has this paradox that goes on, right? She has a little voice in her head that says, it's 11 o'clock, it's bedtime. And then she's like, yeah, 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 yeah. I'll go in a minute. And then there's another voice that's like, Wow, is it that time already? But you worked really hard. Just watch another show. Just do another little thing on your computer. And then she's like, man, you got a point. Okay? But the crazy thing is, yeah, is this kind of uh, angel on one shoulder and devil on the other shoulder type of thing that she's, that she's going through, right? And I think a lot of us have this dilemma. It's like so, such a paradox. It's such a paradox. Now, the thing is about this that we for we actually regret this in the morning. Feels good in the moment, but in the morning we always regret it. Right? Now obviously we have a reserve. You can go without a little bit of sleep for a while. We see the coffee and the Red Bulls and all these things work, okay? But obviously it can lead to health problems and it leads to like it's the one of the number one causes of traffic accidents and all this stuff and it leads to lack of concentration and all the rest of it. Now, as you can see on the screen, like sleep apps are the most popular health apps. Like we love to 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 regulate our sleep. We love these apps. We think it's it's important, but still we fight against our bedtime. And the strange thing is, get this, people who sleep later than planned don't behave according to their intentions. We all have good intentions, but we don't behave according to these good intentions. We want to sleep on time, but we, we, we procrastinate. And this is why. There's a problem with self-control. And actually behind that, there's a problem of character, discipline, and perseverance. Now, don't click off yet. Okay, we're gonna we're gonna fix this. We can fix this, okay? There's not be saying you're doing this wrong and you're doing that wrong, okay? We all go through this and it's fixable. So prefrontal cortex, okay, this is the part in your brain. It's at the front of your brain. And we use this to to make choices all day long. It determines our goals and everything. Like the whole day long, we we have to make a lot of choices, right? For instance, are we going to sport? What sport are we gonna do? Like um, global warming, are we gonna recycle, yes or no? Or like using your phone behind the wheel, are you going to do that or not? Are you gonna pick up that call, yes or no? Like we have to make choices all day, every day. When you get out of bed, oh, gonna pee, gonna brush my teeth, gonna have a shower. What am I gonna eat, gonna make my, like we make choices all day long. But this is the problem, okay? You got your notepad out because this is this gonna blow your mind, okay? If you wanna be part of the family, make sure you hit bumps, thumb, as zone to that subscribe button. 
comment because I really want to know what you think. Like because you obviously like this video and it's free 99 to hit that like button. Why well, should I hit the notification bell to get notified for the next video? This is, this is the problem. Are you ready? When it comes to sleeping, the benefit of sleeping isn't instant. Hey, listen, when it comes to sleeping, the benefit of the act of sleeping is not instant. Okay, there's this thing called delay discounting. And it means that the, f oh, the further a thing is in the future, the less we value this thing. So there was a study in the 60s with kids and they had a choice of getting one marshmallow now or two marshmallows 20 minutes from now. And the funny thing is, as you can guess, it was really, really hard for these children <laughs> to resist the one marshmallow and you might think ah but that's just children they were four year olds you might think oh their prefrontal cortex is not even developed but we also have delay discounting we also have this thing where the future thing the, f the thing in the future is less valuable than the thing that's closest to us in time right and we only see the effects of these things like on a Friday or in the early morning. Now, it's estimated that young folk spend an average of eight hours and 36 minutes on media, all kinds of media, right? And that's more time than most people go to bed. But it also happens with with adults, actually. It goes in like a U kind of, a U kind of form, right? So you're young, you're at the top there, you use a lot of media, and then it dips a little bit because you're an adult and you have a lot of things to do and you're working and stuff like that. And then when we're going, back up the U, it's funny because there's an illustration of the U, but that's from the university where she's at. Um, <laughs> at the top of the U is pension. So then people spend more time on media and stuff like that. But even in this adult phase, two and a half hours is spent on TV. And the thing is, media doesn't stop in the living room anymore. Living room, <laughs> the living room is no longer the place where we stop watching media, where we stop watching TV, where we stop sitting on the computer because now everything is portable. So we're on our phones, our tablets, our laptops or whatever, whatever, and it's all coming with us to the bedroom. And that is the problem. It's estimated also that youth, after nine o'clock, youth or young people still do partake in about four different media activities. Four different media activities. Maybe these could be four different websites, four different apps. And they are still, still going. Now, what this lady is telling us is that if we want to stop doing all this, it is in our hands, okay? It is our fault, but it's in our hands, okay? We are part of the problem, but that means we are part of the solution, okay? Definitely part of the solution. The weird thing about media use is that it seems less effort leads to big gains, which is entertainment and relaxation. So basically with a click of a button, we can be relaxed, we can be entertained. And the weird thing about this is that we actually start to associate these feelings of entertainment and relaxation and happiness and joy. We associate that with media, right? And all these feelings, all these high cost, low cost, high gain, all these feelings, they actually stop once the media stops. So it's like, it's like you're trying to get a fix. It's like you're trying to get a high. And you know where to get it. It's with a click of a button. And that's what we do. And that is the definition of a habit. You know, that is definitely the definition of a habit. A habit is a routine of behavior that is repeated regularly and tends to occur subconsciously. So that's a habit. It's a routine of behavior that is repeated regularly and tends to occur subconsciously right so before we know it this is what we always do this is what we always turn to right now a habit becomes something that's automated it's automatic it's like when we hear our, our phone beeping buzzing immediately our hand goes towards our pocket or into our bag or onto the table wherever the phone is we scoop that thing up and we want to know what is going on we know that there's something to enjoy there the sound of our phone going off has automatically been linked 
to, you know, to, to excitement, to, to juicy stuff, something to, something to enjoy, something to experience, right? Now we practice self-control all day long. As I said before, we make choices all day long, right? So in the evening, we want to treat ourselves. But the thing about it is sleep is crucial to charge the battery that we run on. You know, and in sleep, we gain a lot of self-control. Like it helps us to gain self-control. It helps us to be sharper. It helps us to be, to make wise decisions. Having sleep and being well rested helps us to make good decisions. It actually helps you gain that self-control. So it's actually a vicious cycle. It's a vicious cycle. When you sleep more, you gain that self-control to actually at the end of the evening be like, nope, it is time for bed and I'm going to sleep. Okay. So that's very important. It's a vicious cycle. That's it. If you think you lack that self-control, it's probably lacking because you're always tired and therefore unable to make better choices. Isn't that so interesting? Hmm. Okay. Now, the thing is, saying I'll sleep on time, it doesn't work. Just saying I'll sleep on time doesn't work. I mean, a little less conversation, a little more action, please. That is what we need to do. A little bit more action, but how do you do that? You have to avoid temptation. You have to ensure that the temptation is not there because we know that looking at the media is temptation and we need to get rid of that. So if you want to dodge temptation if you don't want temptation to be around you at all it's like when you're going on a diet if you're going on a diet you ensure there are no crisps or chips <laughs> it's the same thing but depending on what part of the world you are from um you make sure there's no goodies in the house like none at all in fact what i do i make sure i don't even go to the aisles where all the goodies are you avoid them you know where they are they're all shiny all these packets of crisps look all kinds of shiny you just make sure you don't get there. You don't go there because there's always a new pack of crisps. There's always a new show. There's always a new film. There's always a new YouTube video. There's always a new post on Instagram. There's always a new post on Twitter. There's always a new funny story on Snapchat. There's always a new article to read on Reddit, on wherever. There's always a new thing. Eh? Hey, I could go on and on and on and on and on. What's that other thing? Pinterest, Quora, that's another one. That's where people ask questions and people answer. Anyway, I probably shouldn't be giving you any more media ideas, but you get the point. There's so much out there. Avoid the temptation. Sleep without a device in your room. Hey, Whew, this one is difficult because at the same time, we also just want our phones and stuff to be close to us because you never know. You know, people always say, Keep that thing out of your room. Keep that thing out of your room. But it's like you need to ensure that when you need it, if anything were to happen, uh, it being in a whole other room might not be the best thing. So again, self-control. Just tell yourself. For for me, after a while, I do not answer my phone no more. My phone call no more. I have my thing on do not disturb. But be careful with do not disturb because I have a Google Pixel 3a. And when I put on the do not disturb mode, I realized that recently my alarm was not going on. Then I realized it was part of the setting that my alarm wasn't going on when it was on do not disturb. So you have to make sure that it does go on because it will defeat the whole purpose. I mean, we want to sleep, but we don't want to sleep the whole day because sometimes our body is that tired and we don't even know that we could sleep the whole day if we don't take care. Right. So anyway, there's also apps on the phone. Uh, so yeah, check that. Check that that doesn't happen when you do a do not disturb. There's also apps on the phone to show you how long you've been on your phone or how long you've been in apps. So like Instagram has this thing where you can put how long you've been on the app and you can definitely scale that. Uh, you can definitely say, okay, I only want to be on the app for 20 minutes and then it will go off at 20 minute mark. And then um, what else? Netflix, you also have an option to do the post play, they to stop the post play option, right? And Amazon Prime has the same thing. Because notice when you're looking at Amazon Prime movies or whatever, or Netflix series or movies, sometimes it just starts playing the next thing. Especially with series, actually. It just starts playing the next episode. And huh, sometimes I'll be watching, I'm like, is this still the same episode? And I realize I've already watched five episodes. So that's 
that's dangerous too because you obviously always want to know what goes on which is why for a very long time i stopped watching netflix and all these type of things because it's addictive i am such a tv holic i'm such a media holic that actually i could sit there and just watch all the series all day every day just keep watching 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 and it is very 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 dangerous it is so so dangerous to do that it is so so dangerous it's bad for you anyway um time goes really really fast you guys time goes really really fast and you know you could put a timer maybe one hour before bed you make sure that you know whether it's in that hour or before that hour you have clean brush your teeth you find your shower or whatever you're wearing your pjs you pray you do all that and you're sitting up in the bed so even when somebody calls you like the other day i called a friend and it was actually already 11 o'clock and i wanted to sleep on time but why did i make that decision to call her at 11 o'clock when I wanted to sleep on time, that was a very wrong decision. And I hadn't, I hadn't had my shower, I hadn't brushed my teeth, I hadn't done my skincare routine. I was not in my pajamas. I hadn't flossed. Child, I was behind. And that is not the good, like even if you're gonna do those things, you need to be ready for bed. So that when you add on extra activities, you know, like calling people, but that might be the only thing that you have to do, calling people, and then you can keep it as brief as you want to. But who you know looks at a series and is like five minutes in and it's like, ah, I'll just watch this another day. No. Once you're in it, you want to watch the whole thing. So yeah, be careful with that. I mean, these things will keep you hooked and that's exactly how they want you. They want you to be hooked, but we need our sleep. So what I'm going to try and do, I'm going to keep all my devices in the room, but I'm going to exercise self-control because I can with so many other things. So why not with this? Sometimes the greatest pleasure in the world is to have self-control and to be your own boss. To just be your own boss. Be in control of your own life. And I know sometimes people try to take control of their lives in very horrible ways, negative ways. But it's actually a very positive thing that you can do to still be a boss over your own life. You can look at a clock and be like, it's 9 o'clock. I'm going to bed. I don't care what's going on around me. I don't care what people are doing. I need my sleep. And you do. Now, as for that Mind Valley thing, talking about your chronotype and all the rest of it, listen. <laughs> uh, hey, well, um, no, just go to bed. Because I looked into all these things and sleep apps and all these different things, and then you have a subscription here and you can pay for this. And just go to bed. You're tired. You're naturally already tired. Why waste your time with all these things and following all these sleep gurus and things? You know you're tired. You know you need a lot of hours. So go to bed early. And then wake up early because actually when you sleep late most likely you're not going to be able to wake up early these mind valley people and stuff they're just trying to take your money they're trying to take your money and feed you a whole bunch of nonsense that is not true you know that you need to sleep you know and don't forget that a lot of these people they do not have normal jobs they don't have, i say normal oh well normal is changing but they don't have nine to fives so they're doing whatever they're doing. And maybe that guy says he sleeps at midnight and wakes up quarter past six. Very specific. He wakes up quarter past six. And you don't know how slow his morning is. Maybe he starts <laughs> conning the rest of the world. Allegedly, no. Okay. Let me, let me not go that far. But I just did though. Anyway, maybe he starts doing his Mind Valley stuff at 11 o'clock in the morning. You don't know. You don't know. Some of these people, if you watch some of these get ready with me's on YouTube, which is why I don't watch them because I'm like so unrealistic. But yeah, these people, they walk around, la, 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 la. I wake up at 10 and then I go to the gym and I go for a swim and I go for a massage. My friend, I don't have that life now. Why are we sitting here watching these people? We're sitting here watching these people instead of sleeping. They're telling you how they wake up at 10 o'clock and you're sitting here at 10 o'clock at night watching their Why? Why? And why? That is ridiculous. Anyway, I could go on forever and ever, but <laughs> I got things to do, like sleep. So on that note, I am out of here. Make time for glorious life. It is definitely, definitely time to start living it right and living it well rested. Whew, thank you, Jesus. It is 10 to 9 and I'm going away. I'm going to sleep. Bed is looking super heavenly right now. You should go to sleep too. <laughs> God bless. Mm -hmm.